Hey, it's Dave Altavilla for Hot Tech and Hot Hardware here in scenic Maui, Hawaii for Snapdragon Summit 2025. Talking next generation AI fueled mobile experiences next. So yes, welcome back folks. Dave Altavilla here in beautiful Maui with my friend Durga Maladi from Qualcomm. Thank you for having us here, Durga. Thanks for having me. This is a, uh, a, a great occasion every year in uh, scenic Hawaii. Durga is SVP and GM product tech, uh, technology product planning. Uh, yeah, well, why don't you actually start <laughs> with uh, a little bit about yourself, your purview and your responsibility in the companies, folks sure. that don't know you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Yeah. First of all, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's an awesome place. By the way, this is our 10th uh, Snapdragon Summit mm -hmm. uh, uh, over here. Also happens to be the 40th year uh, anniversary of Qualcomm in general, so a lot of milestones. Yeah. So my uh, responsibilities are twofold. One is uh, running all of our technology planning across uh, all the business lines. So mm -hmm. this is everything ranging from processors, AI, connectivity, multimedia, software, and uh, uh, developer relations that kind of spans across all the business lines. So it's a horizontal role. I have a second role of, uh, in the, for an interim period of time, I'm also running the data center business okay. that we just recently started. And uh, so yeah, so that's practically what I do. Mr. AI, in other words, too, right? <laughs> All enough, things yes. AI these <laughs> days anyways, right? All things AI. Absolutely. So, okay, great. Um, let's talk a little bit about you know, the products that you're announcing here today. Um, we certainly can talk speeds, feeds, and specs a little bit, but then let's talk a little bit more about um, applications and experiences in the ecosystem. Um, Snapdragon 8 Elite uh, Gen 5. Um, new uh, silicon resources on board, new uh, enhanced CPU cores, GPU cores, and NPU. Maybe high level on that. Um, what are we looking at in terms of uh, additional horsepower and capability from a silicon standpoint, and then we can talk some some other things like software and whatnot. Yeah, so as we kind of go through uh, the uh, uh, generation over generation improvement compared to last year, there's been a pretty significant double digit uplift on both uh, CPU and GPU, which allow us to bring in all sorts of new capabilities. Gaming on one side, it ranges from 20% to 23%, depending upon which processor that we pick. And then specifically on AI, NPU, uh, the processor, that's a workhorse for generative AI workloads. We've given it a pretty decent boost, uh, going up to about 37% or so, just in terms of the raw capabilities. But if you were to keep aside the percentage improvements and think in terms of what can be done, and yeah. maybe just uh, looking at AI, mm -hmm. for instance, um, two years back when uh, we were right here uh, in, uh, in Hawaii, and we talked about uh, large models that can run, and we were talking about how fast they can run in terms of tokens per second and so on. We were in the double digits, about 15 to 18 tokens per second. That's what you could see in a language model. Mm -hmm. Now we're in the triple digits. We are like way above that, more than 200 tokens per second wow. that we can actually run on a device, which is quite stellar if you just think about it. All of this has happened just in the last two years. Sure. But what it actually means is not just in terms of the, the fact that we can run extremely fast inference on large language models and increasingly multimodal models on our devices is in the end a means towards an end goal. Mm -hmm. The end goal is to have a rich set of applications and agents that can be built on top of it, which actually allows for users to have a very different kind of an experience with the devices that they have today. Mm -hmm. They have the same smartphones that they had two years back and the same uh, PCs uh, that they had two years back, but increasingly when you see these Gen AI based agents and applications running, it's a different experience altogether. I can give a couple of examples in terms of mobile. One thing that we really crave for is a very personalized AI experience, not a run of the mill answer that you actually end up getting from a language model, but something that taps into your enterprise data or your specific data as a consumer on the device that you have or anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And so, Instead of only focusing on our capabilities, which is only one part of it, we worked very closely with the rest of the ecosystem. So throughout this event, you will see a large number of our partners talk about what they have done, building upon our platforms and what kind of use cases consumers and enterprises can expect mm -hmm. from uh, uh, the mobile devices. Okay, all right. Um, I think that's really what, what folks want to know, right? If you, if you think about it from the end user perspective, what can I do? 
with all of this capability. Um, so a couple of exciting demos in the demo area. Um, maybe walk through like some of the, the next generation experiences that, that folks uh, can expect. Some things you're, you're working on that you can speak about with some of the ISVs. Um, those kinds of things. I'll give two examples. Uh, they will be on stage and uh, these are actually applications that you can download uh, on Play Store today, by the way. One is uh, a company called Anything LLM and the yeah. other one is uh, called Page. In both cases, as the name suggests, for example, with Anything LLM, uh, what it allows you to do is to just download any model that you want, but everything else is actually running uh, they built the software on top of it uh, by doing RAG systems with document queries and whatnot that you can run. And that's kind of uh, gives a different, it learns your preferences, it learns uh, your specific needs, and it gets more and more personalized towards your taste. So, so that's kind of the beginnings of what we called as uh, AI agents and AI applications, which are personal in nature. Uh, Page has a very similar uh, thing. There is one subtle distinction. In one case, uh, we even end up having uh, uh, one of them is just on Android, but the other one is mix and match of both Android and Windows, which means you can actually run it on two different kinds of devices and have them synchronize across each other. Oh, wow. and these are pretty nice consumer-centric uh, uh, applications if you kind of think about it. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, the actual, like, what else can we do with these uh, uh, extremely sophisticated capabilities on the device. Uh, we'll, you might have seen uh, a few more demos where a lot of it is multimodal in nature. In other words, it's not just video, I'm sorry, it's not just text that you can actually read, sure. but it's a combination of text, audio, and images and video that you can put together, which brings a different kind of a user experience for anyone who's looking for intelligent uh, assistance mm -hmm. on devices. Yeah, yeah. No, that's exciting stuff. I, I checked out uh, some of the demos myself, and I saw actually some interesting demos with Snapdragon uh, X2 Elite. Yes. Uh, that's another product that you're heavily involved in, obviously, as well. Um, saw some productivity demos that were interesting, where the LLM would take a, an Excel spreadsheet of data and create charts and, and do this other sort of um, very, you know, labor-intensive work for you uh, and kind of be your, your assistant on the fly. Um, are you looking at any other applications, like let's just talk about the Windows ecosystem for a minute. Anything new to, to look at there or to think about in terms of how you guys are enabling that? Yeah, so um, you will see a lot more. It's, you know, when we talk of agents, by the way, uh, you will see that there are a lot of these domain specific agents that will come, uh, that will start coming up. So you will see an emergence of, you mentioned the financial planner as an agent, mm -hmm. but you, ha you have other agents, like you have the calendar agent, you have a travel agent, you have different kinds of other agents. We anticipate moving forwards that a lot of these agents will come in as a part of the first party applications by itself. In other words, they're kind of integrated into the OS. Sure whether it's in the, uh, you know, not speaking on behalf of some of our partners on this, but you know who they are. Uh, we do see the emergence of that baked into the OS. In addition to that, we have third party agents with whom we are working, and this is like with ISVs and so on. Those will be complementary to the existing first party agents. I think that's how we see things happening. But at the end of the day, as Qualcomm, what we are providing is the silicon and the software that allows people to build their agents on top of it. And we are increasingly interested in making sure that the user experience is seamless across different kinds of devices. Uh, and uh, that, I think, is going to be key as we move forwards. Right, right. So you folks are stewards as well of uh, the contextual aware side of things as well. So how our devices communicate with each other across different platforms and enabling that. Um, is that a lot of R&D effort? Do you guys put a ton into that? That was uh, quite a bit of uh, work from our side, primarily because there's no actual standard that's written down anywhere. So right. we had to kind of create protocols which allowed us to actually do that, communicate across different kinds of devices. The devices can be from two different OEMs. They can be two different operating systems. So there's like a lot of layers of complexity that get built in. But underneath it all, it's Snapdragon. So mm -hmm. that actually allows us to actually have the right foundation. Yeah, yeah. Um, boy, I mean, it's exciting stuff. You guys are at the forefront of it. Um, anything else that we should take away from Snapdragon Summit in terms of what folks should think about when they think about uh, whether it be agentic AI, 
Um, I think Elon Musk had a little statement about how apps someday may go away and it just may be your agent running the device for you and, and handling things at your beck and call, so to speak. I'm paraphrasing, but maybe There's a couple of things that, that I want to actually mention. One is something yeah. that uh, I think is going to be increasingly important moving forwards. And that is about uh, how do you uh, have a level of authenticity associated with the content uh, that is actually uh, created on a device. Oh. So if you kind of were to break it down, I mean, anytime you take a picture, well, that's a real picture. But right. let's say that you adjust it a little bit, I would say that it's just a modified picture, but not a whole lot. It's still a real one. Mm -hmm. If you change the background completely, but you're still there, would you call that as a... Uh, a fake, not really, but I would call it as augmented. So mm -hmm. there is something that comes in over there. And then there is purely synthetic images. Right. From our perspective, because we have the first visibility into what exactly the user is doing, okay. we have a good way of distinguishing between these three different categories, whether it's purely synthetic on one side or it is absolutely real or somewhere in between. And in that perspective, C2PA is one of the ways of making sure that there is a certificate of authenticity associated with each of the with the content that's generated. Sure. So we are baking it in as a part of our Snapdragon offering as we kind of move forwards. But that's something that uh, is uh, probably going to be very useful for consumers as they kind of uh, you know think about it. Uh, the other part is uh, what you mentioned. Uh, on some of the recent tweets. Uh, this is something that we've been saying for about two years, but it is important to understand that the edge devices, all the devices that we carry around in our hands, are increasingly becoming inference nodes. Mm. There's a lot of AI that's coming in. In other words, edge AI is not some sort of a, a fantasy anymore. It's not something that's a little bit out there, but it is real and it is it is available today in commercial devices. Sure. And that trend line is continuing. It is inevitable that we will finally see that happen in all kinds of devices. Working in a complementary way with AI that runs in data centers and in the cloud. Mm, good stuff. I mean, that is, that's ultimately the goal, right? Yes. Uh, the, the, the device, I guess, you know, it's there, but it gets out of the way. It's your tool. It's your enabler. Interesting commentary about uh, C2PA, and, and I think folks are concerned about authenticity, and, and what, I'm, what I'm seeing is it real. Um, and so that makes perfect sense. Um, thank you for those insights. Anything else we should take away before we let you go on this? Anything we missed here today? No, I would just say, you know, you should look at the, if those of you who are going to be online, make sure that you watch the summit uh, on YouTube. And uh, I think it's on YouTube, if I recall. But, uh, oh, yeah. you know, enjoy the show. Uh, there's lots to, lots coming up in the next two days. Absolutely. Thank you, Durga. Thanks for having us. Hit the thumbs up and subscribe, folks. And thanks for stopping by.